part two of the Hochhat Pass features the second half of the ascent. If you intend driving this pass, it's important to watch part one first, which contains the Google Earth orientation clips, as well as other important safety, tourism and historical information. As altitude is gained, the views start opening up, revealing a panorama of peaks and hills, smothered in dense vegetation. There aren't many safe places to stop, but if you do stop at any point, it should not present any serious problems, as traffic volumes are usually very low. As the road climbs up the southern side of the mountain, it ducks in and out of eight smaller side ravines. Most of these have been fully concreted to prevent water runoff damage to the road surface, and all of them have a very tight turning angle. In each case, you should reduce your speed to under 20 km per hour. There are commanding views out over the valley to the north and to the west, and the conical peak known as Langkorp is the dominant geographical feature. Of all the passes and ports in the Bavijanskloof, the Hochhat Pass is probably the most dangerous and is also in the worst condition. For 4x4 vehicles, you'll need to disengage your centre diff lock as the concrete strips will cause axle wind-up. Rather drive in all-wheel drive mode or simply switch to 4x2. The pass is very narrow in the upper reaches and some careful manoeuvring will be necessary to get past oncoming traffic. If you stop anywhere to disembark along the ascent, make sure that your handbrake is properly applied and your engine is switched off and your vehicle is left in a low gear or reverse. The South African Railways Road Motor Services began operating a regular bus service through the Kloof in 1932. The service ran from Willowmore to Kierom on Mondays and Thursdays and returned the following day. The oddly shaped bus used for this service was called a tri-compo for its three compartments, which consisted of a cabin for the driver and his assistant, followed by a small compartment for those holding first-class tickets, while second-class ticket holders sat at the larger rear section of the covered part of the bus. The rear half consisted of a large metal cage-like structure which housed farming equipment, seeds and livestock. Postal items were transported in the front with the driver. By 1998, the bus service became uneconomical and was discontinued, leaving local residents with no other option to revert to the humble donkey and car transport system, which is still in use in certain parts of the Bavijanskloof today. Along this northwest running ridge, the gradients are consistently between 1 in 5 and 1 in 7, and although low range is not a prerequisite, it will provide better control. Similar to the Hrasnek Pass, this road was built with government funds, but with the help of local farmers supplying labour. Some of the engineering is not quite up to the standard of Thomas Bain, but build a road the farmers surely did. Reaching the summit comes with a sigh of relief, especially from passengers. The geology in the Bavians Cliff is quite fascinating, and the peninsula sandstone formations are the oldest, which usually dominate at higher altitudes and in the peaks. Cedarberg Shale separates the peninsula from the Chodini formation with a 10 to 40 meter wide bar and is usually associated with lower lying necks and saddles. Chodini sandstone is generally brown in color and can often be recognized by the numerous shallow caves in the cliffs. Skirverberg sandstone is associated with the Coxcomb range and most of the higher peaks of the Bavijanskloof. Sardinia Bay is mixed with phyllitic shales and small pebble conglomerate. It can be seen at low altitudes at the eastern end of the Bavijans range. The final rock type is the Bavijans Kloof, which is dark in color and along with the Sardinia Bay formation is relatively uncommon. The Cape Fold Belt is a fold and thrust belt of late Paleozoic age which affected the sequence of sedimentary rock layers of the Cape Supergroup in the southwestern corner of South Africa. The Cape Fold Mountains form a series of parallel ranges that run along the southwestern and southern coastlines of South Africa for 1,000 kilometers from the Cedarberg 300 kilometers to the north of the Cape Peninsula and then along the south coast as far as Port Elizabeth 700 kilometers to the east. The Bavijanskloof is home to the Cape Mountain Zebra. This species differs from the more widespread Birchall Zebra by being slightly smaller and sleeker and by not having shadow stripes. Cape Mountain Zebra are not territorial and occur in breeding herds comprising a breeding stallion with a small number of mares and their foals in bachelor herds. 
The historical population of Cape Mountain zebra in the Bavianskloof area declined due to the intensification of agriculture along the Bavianskloof River. This cut the zebras off from a vitally important water source during periodic droughts. As farms were fenced, the population of the zebras became confined to the nutritionally poor mountain Feinbos areas. This final bend near the summit is a big right-hander which curls through 120 degrees as it heads from northeast to east. There are toilet facilities here as well as information boards.